friends and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be building the Ford Pinto. This is a re-release through round two of the AMT kit. I got this kit over the holidays and I've been looking forward to building it. I know the Pinto has somewhat of a checkered past that included many recalls, many lawsuits, an exploding gas tank, uh, you name it, this car, this little car had some problems getting through life. However, uh, for some reason, I've just always liked the Pinto. Uh, along with the um, AMC Gremlin, I just think those cars are, are cool looking. So I've been looking forward to building this kit. The kit comes with a turbocharged engine, which I will most likely be using. Uh, it comes with the cool Coke machine. I've been looking forward to building one of those. Also, you can make it stock, but who wants to make a stock one? No, thank you. So we're gonna put this one together and I'm not sure how I'm gonna build it yet, but uh, I'll come up with something cool and I'll figure it out as I go along. The uh, Pinto came around in the 70s. I think it first launched uh, for sale in 1971. It was Ford's answer to the subcompact cars of the era, like the Volkswagen Beetle, the Toyota Corolla, the Datsun 510, all of these cars were really uh, popular at the time because they were small, they got good gas mileage, gas crisis, all this stuff that was going on. So Ford uh, came out with the Pinto and, and part of its design philosophy was under $2,000, under 2,000 pounds. So Ford quickly put this one into production. I think normally a production car takes about 43 months from, uh, you know, idea to final finish and I think they did the Pinto in quite a lot less time, only 25 months. Now compared to how most modern, most cars back then were made from concept to release, you're looking at like 43 plus months. So they produced this rather quickly. Of course, with that quick release came some flaws like an exploding gas tank. And any minor rear end collision would cause the gas tank to rupture, spill fuel, and subsequently explode into a ball of flames. So anyways, we're not worried about all that, but that's the some of the checkered history of this car. I'm looking forward to just building this car and having some fun with it. It's not a very challenging build. It's just how I'm going to paint it and detail it. That'll be the fun part. I'm going to grab some glue and some paint and get to the build.
Hey guys, quick break in the build. So, the color I've chosen for the Pinto is Metallic Access Gold from the Createx Colors, uh, Wicked Colors line of paint. I've had mixed results uh, with the Wicked Colors uh, in the past, so I'm gonna try it again. I am using the 401 reducer, and I'm also gonna try to use this 4030 Balancing Clear. Um, this is kind of a urethane uh, clear. So I'm not sure, I, I want a dark gold. I'm go What I'm shooting for is like a 1970s era GM gold. Um, yeah, I know it's a Ford, but I really like that GM gold color. This is close to what I think I want. However, I'm not sure, I want it a little darker. So I, what I'm doing is uh, the Pinto comes with a spare hood uh, for the custom build, which I'm not doing or for the custom, you know, add the nose on hood, uh, which I think looks horrible, so I'm not gonna use it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna paint half the hood primer gray and half the hood primer black. And then I'm gonna spray the, the uh, gold over those and then see what my results are. I'm gonna go do that test and we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So I did my test. Disregard that rough line right there. That's where the tape was. But I don't know if you can see this on camera. Yeah, probably not gonna be able to see it on camera really, but it's a little darker on the side that was primed in black than uh, the side that was primed in gray, which no surprise there, but I'm not sure if I like it. I, I really, it's not the exact gold I'm looking for, but it, it's close. I think with the color accents I'm going to use in the final build, it'll still come out pretty good. I also tested it on the wheels. So the wheels were primed in gray, which is fine because I'm going to do a wash in here. And I'm also going to do a different color for the uh, aluminum ring around the edge. So it'll be gold on the inside with the aluminum on the outside. I think it'll look really cool. So I'll probably do a couple of these up to see how they're going to look. And then we'll go from there. But all in all, for the kit being what it is, I'm not going to invest too much into getting it just exactly right. I mean, it, this kit is a, it's a nice kit, but it has its issues. You know, I just want to have fun with it. So, so there we go. Test completed and we are moving on.
Hello friends and welcome back. Here we have the completed 1977 Pinto Popper from AMT. I painted the kit in a actress gold, which is kind of a metallic gold color. I also accented the wheels with the gold in the inside with aluminum on the outside and a chrome ring. I blacked out a lot of the chrome, but I left a little bit like the door handles and on the wheels. In my mind, this car is being uh, driven around and souped up by a, a kid in high school, uh, probably in the 80s era. His grandparents or someone gave him, gave him this Pinto and he's doing all he can to fix it up and make it his own. Also tinted the uh, back window and the two rear quarter windows to give it that more of a custom kind of 1980s or 70s uh, look. So I did do the four cylinder turbo engine in here. Originally was gonna try to get an aftermarket uh, engine and put a, a big Ford 302 in there, but I decided yeah, I'm just gonna stick with the four cylinder. Had the hardest time getting the exhaust from the uh, exhaust on the engine coming off the turbo down to the pipes to the side pipes, but a lot of uh, trimming and cutting and we finally got it all together. Uh, the interior and everything came out good. Uh, not a whole lot of detail, but uh, it came out nice and it looks really good. The few decals I used, like the stripes along the uh, rocker panels and on the rear window, I actually got a set of water slide decals from a guy on eBay. The name of the eBay store is My Custom Hot Wheels. He's out of Australia, but these are really great water slide decals. You can see here I used the stripes and I used a couple other decals that I've used so far. Um, and then the Coke decal, the I love Coke decal on the back window is the decal that came with the kits. But I'll leave a link to this guy's eBay store in the description. Really good decals, really great guy. I'm going to be buying more decals from him. Okay, we also uh, built the Coke machine. Uh, this is the first Coke machine out of these kits that I've built. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time on this. I actually built this within just like four hours uh, yesterday just to get it done. Uh, came out okay. Uh, I did not do the wood grain. I actually Googled 1970s and 80s Coke machines and I actually didn't come across one that looks exactly like this uh, with the layout of it. Um, similar, but not exactly. And some of them did have the wood grain. A lot of them had the wood grain, but some of them were just painted red. And I kind of like the red look of it. So I didn't do the wood grain. I just did the red with some chrome accents and the stickers, the stickers that came with the kit that are supposed to go on the side here. I just put on the side of the Coke machine since I wasn't using them. Um, the Coke machine was fun and, uh, it looks nice. Overall, I had fun building this kit. Even though the kit is not very complex, uh, it does have some fitment issues and it is going to take a bit more of a uh, experienced model builder to get it to go together right. The hatchback here, the hatchback part was so badly warped that took me probably two or three hours to finally get 
uh, heated and cooled and heated and cooled to get it kind of straight and then another hour or so to get it tack welded with some super glue to hold it and then a couple clamps and to get it finally glued in place. Um, after that, the rest of the body seemed okay. All in all, this was a fun kit to do. I really enjoyed building the Pinto and uh, I would suggest this kit for a more uh, experienced model builder. The custom that they show on the box with this custom back end and also a custom front end that's not shown is pretty tricky. You'll have to do some major body trimming and patch filling and stuff like that. So I decided not to because I just like the stock look of this one. And again, I like how this one came out and that's all that really matters because we're just doing this for fun and having a great time. So that'll do it for my 1977's Popper Pinto build. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and if you've hung out this long, please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. It helps with the YouTube algorithms and uh, it gets me more views. So until my next video, which I'm already working on, uh, I will see you guys later and as always, be safe out there and go build something. Thank you.